Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining. In today's episode, we will be talking about the MGM hack. Ransomware group steps up issues statement oh, blah, statement over MGM results compromise. So probably y'all know this has happened last week. Uh, it was a very, very interesting attack, to be quite honest. And uh, it's two very contrasting situations. Uh, if you're not aware, MGM got compromised um, there, supposedly. And we'll get into it right away. Supposedly, there's two two threat actor groups that co-mingle together to produce uh, such amazing results, I might add, you know, with air quotes approximately 11 million people got compromised and have their data exposed email phone numbers uh, of course you know they're probably going through well the recovery phase and then they're going to be undergoing a highly intensive forensics and then they will probably if your account was affected which is you know let's be honest most likely it is you will probably get a letter with uh, maybe credit monitoring in your mail it depends on how they're going to go with it so without further ado uh, we do have a, a couple of elements here so basically alf v or black hat ransomware has been uh, taking responsibility for this attack and as it shows here they did issue a statement um, and I'll read you the statement which, because there's a bunch of speculation online. There's a bunch of conspiracy theories that um, somebody was looking to get the information of just one guy and then they decided to hack MGM. But it wasn't just MGM. It, it was Caesars as well. And that's what I wanted to get into it right away is because Caesars was affected as well but caesars decided to pay the ransomware which initially it was 30 million dollars they negotiated down to 15 and then they paid for them the decision was pretty easy to make they had to take into account how much money are they losing a day and supposedly mgm grand is losing in between 15 and 30 million dollars a day uh and when caesars was faced with the exact same situation caesars just paid them off and of course when you pay off a ransomware gang you have to rely on their trustworthiness which we all know they're criminals for a reason so uh, how is that going to play out for example if i had an account with caesars uh, and supposedly my data is somewhere out there what are they going to do are they going to notify me as a customer that my data might have been exposed my credit card my uh, phone number, email, uh, user ID, things of that nature. Are they going to pop up somewhere on the dark web? Is Alpha V going to sell that information? Um, I guess that's most likely possible, <laughs> I would say. But let's get into the statement that was made to MGM. So according, this is Alpha V, as you can see here, the ransomware group and they have stated the following we have made multiple attempts to reach out to mgm results international as reported mgm shut down computers inside the network as a response to us we intend to set the record straight uh pretty well well supposedly they're russian but the grammar and everything so far is absolutely on point uh uh, and when when a ransomware group says that we intend to set the record straight you know that it's it's about to be a pretty you're going to get a front row view of the mess that happened so no ransomware was deployed prior to the initial takedown of their infrastructure infrastructure by their internal team so basically in case of ransomware guys you would always if you get ransomware or your company your well your company because not you yourself even if, even an individual hacks they do try to get in contact with it if you're uh you know a high value target they will have a, a communication channel with you where they'll try to negotiate a ransomware or something of that nature and uh with companies it's usually the same case they do leave a communication open and they do authenticate you and they have an entire process you'd be surprised on how well organized uh, some of these guys are and they do a lot of research uh, in terms of you know the ransomware that they use is completely tailored they can modify the parameters they can 
pick and choose whatever they want to delete, whatever processes they want to spin up, whatever folders they want to whitelist or not delete. Uh, it's 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 some pretty gnarly stuff if you get hit with uh, ransomware this level. So no ransomware was deployed prior to the initial takedown of their infrastructure. So basically they were trying to play nice. Uh, they basically told them, hey, we're here, um, pay us up or else. And again, the response from MGM, we know better <laughs> versus uh, Caesars. So technically the recommended approach in ransomware cases is for the company to already have you know an incident response playbook in case of a ransomware and in that playbook basically it's you know a step-by-step -step guide a playbook is a step-by-step -step guide on what to do in case of ransomware for example or in case of xyz attack so in case of a ransomware uh, part of your playbook should be to have someone that would be responsible in authenticating themselves as part of the company or as a lawyer or as a third party authorized to speak on behalf of the company and they would be able they will have to genuinely authenticate with the threat actors otherwise they will not even talk to you why do you want to talk to them number one is to see what they want number two is to negotiate uh, number three is to stall if you have anything to stall for but typically that's not the case because they do have you you know uh, against the wall at that point and it's, it's, it's just stalling in terms of taking a decision making a strategy something to that nature but you do want to typically get in contact with them um of course you know <laughs> Uh, our, our governmental agencies and their posture is not to negotiate ever but at the same time uh, you know it's it's a case-by-case -case scenario it's a case-by-case -case situation where some businesses are going to pay the ransomware such as Caesars Palace but going back so MGM made the hasty decision to shut down each and every one of their Okta Sync servers after learning that we have been lurking on their Okta agent server, sniffing passwords of people whose passwords couldn't be cracked from their domain controller hash dumps. Basically, it's right here in the first paragraph. One of the methods that they use to uh, leverage their access into MGM is basically through Okta. Okta had a massive massive breach as well and there's another breach that they're referring to here but obviously uh they they uh they leveraged information from the octa breach to get into the system basically they're telling us that um they once once uh once mgm got aware that something's going on with octa they uh, their playbook and their incident response plan said that okay we unplug everything um which do you think it worked <laughs> resulting in their octa completely being blocked locked out meanwhile we continue having super admin privileges on their octa so they were already in they were super late along with the global admin privileges on their azure tenant so basically microsoft uh aka ridiculous access so super admin is pretty much god mode on uh no global admin i'm sorry global admin is pretty much god mode in azure meaning you you can do whatever you want and that's that's another thing like how can a, a corporation like mgm like not have an oversight or not have any alerts or not have any monitoring done to to see that you know xyz user or this user has been made an admin or this user you know had been compromised you know one of your global admins which typically there should be a handful of global admins and these accounts should be guarded extremely extremely well but going forward, they made an attempt to evict us after discovering that we had access to their Okta environment, but things did not go according to plan. Well, no kidding. <laughs> On Sunday night, MGM implemented conditional, conditional restrictions that barred all access to their Okta environments due to inadequate administrative capabilities and weak incident <laughs> response playbooks. Oh my goodness. Their network have been infiltrated since Friday. 
Due to the network engineer's lack of understanding on how the network functions, network access was problematic on a Saturday. Then, they made the decision to take offline seemingly important components of their infrastructure on Sunday. So on Friday, they gained access. Saturday, the company says, uh, there's something going on with Okta, with authentication, we don't understand what's going on. Uh, Sunday, they're probably thinking, okay, it's been, you know, at this point, more than 24 hours. There's definitely something going on. It may be malicious. Shut it down. Okay. So, uh, it didn't work. They were already in. It was it was a little too late. It was a little too late. Uh, in terms of PII, uh, we are not. They say we are unable to reveal if PII information has has been exfiltrated at the time. So. There has been multiple, multiple pictures, and I will show you like some of the pictures here um, that have been circulating. So basically, they would have these signs that are saying we're experiencing unforeseen difficulties. Um, everything was down, like you know, ATMs were down. The elevator uh, obviously works with a card. You know, it, it, you, you had a walkie-talkie. There was a famous picture with a walkie-talkie inside of the elevator, just to for you to understand, like uh, how how much did did this affect MGM? Uh, guests weren't able to access their rooms. Uh, Check-ins and check-outs were being done manually. Uh, lines and lines to all MGM like uh, resorts. Lines and lines like. It took reportedly, you know, in between two and three hours from what I uh, was reading on Reddit to, to get checked in at one of the MGM hotels. It was absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Uh, of course, you know, if you want to see if you've, uh, you know, if you've got hacked, of course, you can always check the site for any, like, even a, as a preventative measure, if you, you know. If you suspect that, uh, or if you have, you know, a very old email that you you've been using quite a lot, go and uh, on haveibenpawn.com, put it, put your email in there and see. It's uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic resource, and you can see what breach uh, you've been involved in, and then obviously if it's a recent breach or if you've never changed your password, then you should, and it should be, you know. One of the practices that you should be implementing every few months uh, change your password even if it's a few numbers a few letters if it's you know, a completely new pa ideally you will want a completely new password but i know how <laughs> y'all are and you wouldn't want to change much because you would forget but again um you know just good good practices change your password every few months or you know after an incident like this it doesn't hurt to to check if you you if you've been breached or especially if you have credit cards with Caesars or with MGM I would highly recommend you to uh, request a replacement just in case uh, they may be offering you a replacement anyway uh, to cover their own end of uh, the stick because they do have to report to regulators and so on and so forth so they may offer you a uh, an automatic replacement saying that hey we don't know if your information uh, was exposed maybe maybe not uh, here's your replacement card just to be on the safe side and that's perfectly okay so what's interesting about this Alfie ransomware group is that they have not uh, before taken uh, responsibility for any attack at this point so rumors were leaked from MGM Resorts by unhappy employees or outside cybersecurity experts prior to this disclosure. Based on unverified disclosures, new outlets made the decision to falsely claim that they had claimed responsibility for the attack before we had, uh, aka Malwarebytes, saying this. Basically, um, there's another group that I was mentioning at the beginning of the video called Scattered Spiders. So basically, they were saying that Scattered Spider, the way that Alf V got initial access is with with uh, contacting Scattered Spider, another ransomware group through social engineering, supposedly. So, as it says here, Scattered Spider has a fondness for social engineering tactics used to slip into corporate networks. They don't just use password reset impersonation, but also phishing, 
swip swapping and even MFA fatigue where your mission is to annoy an employee with so many alerts until they eventually say yes. So it is uh, it is said now I, I am not aware even as of today if this has been confirmed but technically that that's the theory is that someone has gotten ex uh, their credentials have been captured by this other ransomware group and then that's one of the ways that Alf V got access but again you know it could be a combination of the things it could be a combination of previous leaks in in you know and you corroborate that with uh whatever happened with this other employee probably the guy that had the uh, global admin privileges on on azure who knows uh but it has been a trend it has been ongoing multiple ransomware groups collaborating together to uh go against you know big 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 corporations like i've mentioned we're possibly talking about 11 million customers that are possibly affected by this breach um if you're going to vegas or if you've been to vegas if you have credit cards i would be uh once again on on high alert maybe change proactively request to change your cards uh you know go on have i enter your email that you have uh, used either with caesars or mgm um you know and see what you see what you get in terms of uh malware bytes and uh their recommendation on how to avoid ransomware is block up of common forms of entry detect intrusion stop malicious and en um, malicious encryptions create off-site offline backups and don't get attacked twice uh it is well known that uh yes once they attacked you at first uh they will attack you twice because they know recovery from a ransomware is not that easy because you do have to replace a lot of infrastructure and uh once you're ready to go online again you have to make sure that you check all the you know all the boxes when you're ready to go and patch everything and just make sure that your environment is as tidy as it can be resetting credentials so on and so forth there's a long checklist that you have to do before you can um, go back online and and back to business so in, t in terms of mgm and the way that they decided to go about this it's it's very tricky and it's very unfortunate because this type of attack does uh stimulate you know these threat actor groups to continue to do what they do and uh continue to you know ransomware for money and especially when you have people paying in terms of you know caesars and <laughs> in hindsight it looks like they've done uh a smarter bit bit well somewhat smarter business decision in paying the ransomware and then have their systems being left alone so you don't hear anything about caesars because they did pay the ransomware so this is the main reason why they're still able to uh, operate and not have the losses and not have well so far uh, not have anything leaked on on their customers which again we're dealing with threat actor groups and i'm pretty sure if someone was to ring the doorbell of alpha v ransomware group and they would say hey uh can you give me the database that you attracted from caesars uh they would most definitely say uh, yes for five million dollars or whatever the magic number is so yet again uh ransomware is still alive still kicking still making money um that is what i have for you today thank you so much for listening stay safe